Thank you for taking time to speak with us here at Geek Network. Oh, of course. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, we're really excited. Um, we got a glimpse of, glimpse of you at, on Chapel Wait, but um, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm super excited to see more of you here on Resident Evil. Yes. Um, to get started, um, do you mind telling us a little bit about yourself? Yes, I am a, a Chinese Canadian actor. I'm currently living in Canada and I was born and raised in China. So I have both countries very deep in my heart. Um, hold them very dearly. <laughs> um, yeah, and I, I've been acting for about uh, four and a half years now um, out of theater school and have recently started to direct and write as well. So it's it's all about um, telling stories, I guess. It's all going in that direction. Yeah, for sure. Trying to become that triple threat, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, it's awesome. You know, um, I always love when I speak to, you know, actors and they talk about how, you know, deep they are influenced by their culture. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's great. I mean, China, Japan, um, my wife and I, bucket list item is definitely going to Japan and it just seems like you know over in that area they're just very welcoming to tourists and mm -hmm. you know you wanting to learn about their culture um you know it's it's a lot different than what we get here in the U.S. you know we're all a mixed bag so <laughs> um, it, it, it's hard to kind of you know find that culture unless you know where to look like me yeah you know, Hispanic culture I'm definitely California I'm from Arizona but I would oh, honestly okay. give California the edge as far as adapting our Mexican culture food wise and all that good stuff. So, of course. Um, but no, yeah, it's really awesome. Um, you know, obviously, we're really excited to see you on Resident Evil. Um, obviously, we do you, do you have anything planned as far as writing um, or anything like that in the future? Is that something that you're just aspiring to jump into? Um, I do. So, I've been, I mean, I've been creating kind of stories and little things, um, any expression of thoughts that I have for a while in terms of just in any mediums, drawings, paintings, um, short stories and things like that. Um, but I recently did, so there are a few things on the go. I recently did turn one of my short stories slash drawings into a short film, um, which I wrote and directed, uh, acted in along with other fantastic actors and, Produced as well, although I did more producing than I had hoped I would. <laughs> but I think that's kind of what happens when you have a passion project and just kind of you want control over everything. Um, and uh, have and I'm also involved in um, a novel that is not mine, but I am involved on the editing side and uh, writing my own feature screenplay, which is way too early to share anything about. <laughs> <laughs> for sure no that's how it goes I definitely understand <laughs> yeah. oh further down the line I'm sure we'll hear about it but yeah you know um I'll definitely have to check out that short film I'm a big fan of short films and oh, you know, really? I love that you know they're getting a lot more attention you know almost the same yeah. thing as comic book adaptations that has blown up um, but yeah. short films are also getting the the treatment on the streamer side you know as far as being adapted into a longer form of storytelling so yeah, you know, there's there's definitely something there, um, underappreciated, if you will. Definitely underappreciated. I think there's such a great way. It, it's like a short story, you know. There's um, when I read a really good short story, I just feel so inspired, and a short film as well, um, uh, graphic novels themselves as well. There's there's just a simplicity about them that kind of reminds us that there isn't as much as the elaborate way of long form storytelling is very, very um, exciting. There's not a whole lot you need to do in order to move someone. Exactly. And, you know, yeah. it, it takes a, an extra, it's an extra challenge to, you know, captivate an audience with such a limited time as well. So, you yeah, know, there, there really isn't room for errors, you know, opposed to like a, two and a half hour movie or anything like that so. yeah there's a lot more forgiving moments there. <laughs> exactly um but you know talking about short stories um definitely want to talk about welcome to raccoon city but yeah um, you had a a very you know your role was limited but your character's role in chapel weight was you know it resonated throughout the entire series you know your 
your character was a, a pivotal role in, throughout the entire family all yeah. the way through the, to the end. Um, what can you yeah. tell us about being on the set and, you know, just being involved with the series? Uh, we loved it. It was absolutely phenomenal. Oh, that's so great to hear. I, I really, I really, really liked it. And I'm really happy with the way that they did it. Um, I thought casting was amazing. And that's such an important part of, of telling like a, a story where you just want the audience to connect with what you're saying. And a lot of it just has to do with casting. There's not a lot you have to really change or manipulate once you have the right people. Um, <clears throat> but working on it was, really really magical but also nerve-wracking it was my first time on set after a very long lockdown it was one of the <laughs> first um projects where you know they were kind of trying out this different zone by color quarantine and um, interaction system that they had um and i i had i was really really nervous you know i i was like i, I haven't been on set in a year and a half and I'm really scared because I feel like I'm not going to be able to perform. I, I won't remember my lines. I won't be able to do anything. <laughs> and on top of that, I am opposite, like arguably one of the greatest actors of our time. And he's, uh, Adrian Brody is just so, so talented. So I just got all sorts of anxiety. <laughs> I don't blame you. It's like the first day of school jitters, right? <laughs> a yeah. lot of things to keep in mind there. And yeah, you know, Adrian is absolutely genius. And, you know, it was one of my favorite things about this series is, you know, Epics reach out to me. And I mean, I had you know, real publications about the series and, mm -hmm. you know, um, public uh, publications regarding the trailer and all that stuff. And it was on my radar for sure, but I definitely yeah. didn't expect to get the chance to see it early. And yeah. Epic's reaching out to me. Um, my God, my wife would, you know, just stare at me because I was just huddled in the corner with my laptop, just binging the entire oh. series. <laughs> It, it's it's one of those series that just keeps you on the hook from beginning to end it definitely and, does you know I feel bad for everybody that's watching it right now because having to wait a week to find out what's gonna happen mm -hmm. is, is absolute torture but yeah. you know um it's probably one of my favorite um you know hearing Adrian's voice carry through every scene it was it was haunting like I don't know how to explain it like it gave me goosebumps just the way he carried his voice through everything was yeah. something I had never seen before and you know the plot the twist my god it, it's yeah. absolutely phenomenal <laughs> They did a really, really good job expanding a short story into something that was extremely captivating on on screen. Um, the short story was terrifying. I, I, you know, got it right away when I found out that I had booked it. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I don't do well with horror. I get really spooked very easily. So <laughs> <laughs> um, even reading it was, I mean, even reading the Resident Evil script, I, I was like covering my eyes half the time. And then I would have to look up and think you're at home reading. There's nothing going to get you, <laughs> but, but it was so hard. But it was it was really, really magical. Like I said, I was really nervous, but Adrian was incredibly kind, incredibly generous um, <clears throat> emotionally. And he you know, we had a, a conversation before while while I was in my two week quarantine out east and um, just got to know each other before we were on set. And he while on set, he was incredibly nurturing and kind and you know, was very reassuring of like, this is all of our first gigs back after a lockdown. So everybody was really nervous. You know, everybody had their first days, but it's going to be great. And he was really, really encouraging and was somehow, somehow just felt like a real human. Like, you know, we were all very safe after quarantine and tested and everything. Mm -hmm. So he, he came up and said, oh, Lily, there's, there's my lovely wife and gave me a huge hug. And right <laughs> after that, I thought, oh, oh, well, you're, you're just a, a human being that I'm connecting with now, you know, um, even though now when I think about it, it's, it's Adrian Brody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's, there's always that starstruck feeling, right? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, we, uh, 
we spoke to Jordan Bloom at the beginning of the year. Um, mm -hmm. he, he's working with Patton Oswalt. They wrote a, a mini series for Marvel together um, oh, for MODOK. Wow. And then I'm sure you've heard of the MODOK series on Hulu. So um, it was the same with him. You know, he, he said the first time he met Patton Oswalt, it was like a childhood dream, you know, and, and everybody yeah. had that embarrassing first moment. So exactly. And, and now they're best friends. They, they go comic book stores <laughs> together. They hang out. So um, yeah. It, it's understandable. Um, the first time I met Stephen Amell at a convention, I, I made an absolute fool of myself. And <laughs> it, it happens. Um, I'm married, but he is one handsome man. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I no regrets. <laughs> That's like a fool. True. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, um, you mentioned that, you know, you're kind of expanding um, your talents. So, you know, working with Johans Roberts. Um, that had to have been a treat. <laughs> it was. Um, you it know, really was. 40, 47 meters down is one of those films that it it doesn't it doesn't seem like something that would really captivate you the way it does when you're looking at something like the poster or the trailer. But mm -hmm. being involved and you know, <clears throat> even as an as the audience in that film, the the level of anxiety that he, you know, built up for that film, it, it was un, unreal. And yeah, well, that's something that I'm really, really excited for the audience of Resident Evil to see is, is that, it, you know, if you're a fan of the game, to really see how they've made this a true origin story of the game. But if you're even not a, a fan of the game or just don't know much about the origin story, knowing that he is going to instill in you that very visceral feeling of what it was like to play the game and how terrifying it was. Um, when I found out that he was a director, I, I looked up everything he'd done. And I, like I said, I get spooked very easily. So I, I couldn't watch any of his films. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like kind of embarrassed, but I really couldn't. But I did watch 47 Meters Down. And even that, I, I had to switch my brain into technical um, filmmaker and not just an audience member uh, enjoying a movie because I had to really see what he was doing and that was when I was still kind of when I was kind of getting interested in directing and cinematography and I thought this is a man who really knows exactly what shots he wants to build that fear in you without exploiting anything um, in a really unnecessary way and he knows so well he knows how to do that so well um, that watching after watching that movie and seeing the budget that it was made for, I thought, okay, well, I, I totally understand where his brain is at. And, you know, on Resident Evil, he was very clear about what he wanted, how he wanted it executed, and was just very sure that this is how it was going to give the audience that feeling, whether you know the games or not, of being in the 90s and playing a game and just being extremely terrified. I mean, even now the games when I, I, I don't play because my fingers are just not good enough. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I just, I'm one of those people who just like presses all the buttons at the same time and hope something good happens. <laughs> um, but I do, I have watched people play and it is terrifying. Yeah. You know, um, I'm, I'm a big fan. Resident Evil 2 was one of the first games that Oh, yeah, I, I really delved into as far as, you know, horror games. My brother bought it for me. I was the youngest, uh, the youngest of four. So uh, my brother showed up and, you know, that was back in the days when we couldn't fit much on a on a CD. So it was, you know, mm -hmm. the, the, the two disc big fat block that he walked in with. Yeah, popped it in and, you know, just hearing those first words, you know, when it's like Resident Evil 2 and yeah. it, was, it was horrifying for a child but I, I couldn't get enough of it and you know yeah. recently getting to relive that when they remade the game mm -hmm. and it, it was fantastic and you know I'm glad to hear it because as a fan of the franchise I absolutely loved in the previous Resident Evil franchise I loved the first film mm -hmm. even the second one um, but to me in my personal opinion you know not to put down the work that they put into it because mm. by God, it, the things they did, I would never be able to do in a lifetime. So mm, exactly. um, but as a fan, I felt like they kind of lost their identity yeah. in the franchise and it kind of moved from a horror movie 
or horror franchise to like an action horror franchise, which to me yeah. kind of put me off. And, you know, um, I'm glad to hear that it'll be something that hopefully will scare me. I'm a big avid horror movie watcher. My wife hates them, but <laughs> I, I love to watch them. Uh, she'll be asleep and I'm just laying in bed watching you know, Shudder and, and all those horror um, oh, movies, Shutter. anything I can find. <laughs> um, so I love it. And yeah, it, it's really I, awesome, you know, to hear that they'll be able to, as a fan, be able to jump in and enjoy it as a horror film and, you know, not get lost in the logistics of what Resident Evil is. So yeah, well, oh, that's something that um, the director was really specific about. I mean, he wrote and directed the thing. And I always find when I'm researching uh, a director or a collaborator, I'm always looking for things that they wrote and directed or maybe mm -hmm. produced as well, because then I know that they really have a very strong idea of what they want it to be. And there is no other way. Um, but he did write and direct it. And he, um, you know, he approached Capcom with this idea of having landmarks as characters in themselves that is so faithful to the original movie i'm sorry to the original original video game right and having um and having this be the origin story for the game was so important to him because it really was just about being a fan of the game playing it as a kid and bringing that back for a completely new generation to appreciate what it was um, and having all the original characters cast the way that they are. I mean, it's a completely new cast. And I, I've, I've never, you know, like I said, I'm just not good at video games. I just can't do it. But I've, so I've never really played. But when I, when I found out that the character was going to be Ada Wong, I thought, oh, this is really, really great. And I did research on her and thought, oh, my God, this is like <laughs> one of the original badass antihero women. This is so cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, you know, um, for me, at least, she's one of my favorite characters in the series, just because you know, most of the time in Resident Evil, it kind of seemed like somebody was either just trying to survive or run away from something. Mm. But Ada, even from the beginning, you know, you play the first Resident Evil game, they mention her and some of the documents that you're, you know, digging through the game. Mm -hmm. But, you know, she was there from the beginning. And then you get her arc, which she just has like a complicated backstory, but it was something that not a lot of characters got that weren't main characters. So yeah. You know, I, I thought that was awesome. So, you know, honestly, a key character. So, um, I mean, in my mind, you're one of the main characters. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, it's an honor. I, I look up to her, even though she is a fictional character. I, I look up to her and the way that she is portrayed um, because she's just so, so cool and mysterious. And I, I really, really like her. <laughs> no yeah of course yeah <laughs> rightfully so um but let me ask yeah. you this so you said you researched her um you know when you're doing your research you know for Ada um what what kind of you know what are you looking for are you just looking to understand the character or do you look at previous you know adaptations of her like in the previous movie franchise and you know kind of see where you think they went wrong or what worked? Um, what exactly was your thought process in that? I I do a, a crazy amount of research for for every character, and I build a life for everyone. So for her, there was a lot of information. the The fan websites are amazing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, they are amazing. I really, it, it really is the fans that make that give the life to the characters that they have. Um, but they, so the, you know, obviously the fan uh, websites were really, 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 really huge. And I also looked up a lot of videos of her in the games and how she mm -hmm. was portrayed, um, obviously isolating the physical movement of it being a video game and how, you know, as technology progressed, there were different changes, but um, how she was portrayed in the video game, how she comes in and out of scenes always so seamlessly in such a mysterious way. And she is so confident 
and um, really looking at her physically, especially in the newer games because of technology, you know, you really get a sense of what they're trying to get at with her body language. And, um, and also the, the Chinese actor, uh, she did a really good job of portraying Ada. I think they, um, I, I really enjoyed watching the movie. I think action movies are incredibly entertaining. Um, but I, I also look for any kind of, um, any kind of advantage or flaws that I perceive as something that could be done differently. And that goes for everything from character behavior to wardrobe to hair and makeup, I think is really, really important. Um, and if it is an origin story, how far back does it go? When mm -hmm. is it set? This origin story is set in 1998. So what influence that has on uh, a character and, um, and also wardrobe wise, you know, like she is very, as much as she is an iconic female character, she was also made and has sustained this image that I personally think is not very practical when it comes to an action sequence, <laughs> you know, that, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> there, there is always going to be an over sexualization of women in action movies. Um, and that's that that's a whole conversation, a separate conversation. I, I don't mm -hmm. really think it needs to change, but I think it definitely can be um, adapted but seeing her wardrobe and everything in the earlier games and especially in that film with the, uh, with the other Chinese actor, I thought, hmm, I, I wonder what can be done to really ground her as a human, but not take away from the things that make her Ada Wong and that the fans love so much about her. Like what's a realistic, happy in between that we can work with? Right. Um, yeah, because I, I think she, is uh, is can be a realistic human. And I think because this is the origin story that is kind of offering an opportunity for a huge new universe of this world, there is definitely places for each character to go and establishing her in a way that is grounded and can be built on in the future in this Resident Evil universe is very important. Um, but also the thing, adding a little bit of spirituality in here, I guess, is the stillness that she has about her that um, extends and lends itself to the confidence in any of her sequences and conversations is something that I connected to Taoism a lot, um, which may sound kind of uh, strange or irrelevant, but the, the peace and stillness that is in Taoism and in the Chinese culture of Tai Chi in martial arts is really, uh, has a lot of strength to it and is the basis for a lot of action sequences. <clears throat> um, the most recent example that I think you would see would be the action sequences in Shang-Chi, which were incredible. Mm -hmm. um, but especially their Tai Chi sequences, I thought this is, this is exactly what I was thinking of, a very slow martial art that you can really apply to any fight sequence. And it also grounds the human heart and mind. And that's something that I kept in mind for Ada a lot. Yeah, for sure. You know, and, you know, when it comes to, you know, traditional martial arts, it, it's always been, you know, that, that connection of mind, body, soul, you know. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I love that. And, you know, going back to, you know, her wardrobe. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, she she kind of was that sex symbol, um, it seemed like compared to the other female characters in the game. Mm -hmm. um, I always saw her kind of like a like a James Bond vibe mm -hmm. because, you know, um, she she always had this very, you know, I don't want to say fancy, but, you know, elegant wardrobe mm -hmm. but you know she would kick everybody's ass yeah. <laughs> you know much like you see uh, James Bond do he's exactly. always wearing the nice suits and all that but you know yeah. he's always getting himself involved in situations and yeah you know he he goes with it with what he's wearing and that's kind of the vibe I always got from her but yeah, yeah I totally understand you know we're we're seeing a lot of you know adaptations of video games and 
like I said, you know, comic books, anime with Cowboy Bebop coming to Netflix, you know, um, mm-hmm. there was some changes to the characters there, you know, to their wardrobe. So yeah, it, and I think change is good. And, you know, like I said, the the sexualization of women in action movies has been around since, you know, I can I don't even remember, but it will be around forever. And I, I don't necessarily think that it's a bad thing um, in a vacuum or something that needs to completely go away. I think there is something very exciting and intimidating and, um, you know, attractive about an unattainable character doing impossible things in these elegant and extravagant outfits. That's escapism. That's mm-hmm. why we watch these things and read these things. But given giving the example of a James Bond, it's, you know, how they make those franchises or like Mission Impossible or Born, they're always they're always realistic and practical things as well. Um, and that's kind of the happy medium that I wanted to find with this origin movie and for Ada as well. It's like, you don't have to take away everything about her that makes her sexy because if you're showing a sexy woman on camera, it can be a very empowering thing. But how do we empower a human without just distilling them down and putting them into a little box of this is exactly what she is and she just fights in a sexy outfit and that's it right There's a lot more to that and if she is given you know she's given practical um, storylines or scenes or that kind of that still stays with the escapism and excitement of an impossible action sequence then that is that's really the goal for sure yeah 100 percent with you on that one and I honestly don't doubt that Johans can do it. <laughs> so, or or you guys have done it. I mean, the film's already coming out here in a couple of months. So, um, but yeah. let me ask you this. Um, you know, you mentioned you know possible universe and all that, and you know something I noticed from the beginning was, you know, a very young cast, and you know it's an origin film, and you know these these little things that that make my little geek heart explode (laughs) Um, (laughs) um, so is this something that you know is a planned expanded universe or something to build upon or is it kind of a situation where you know we're gonna see how this film you know um, produces and how it's received and then we'll go from there I I really don't have an answer for you okay no that's perfectly fine (laughs) yeah I I think there's definitely potential um as you know as to the plans of it I cannot speak to them but uh definitely potential definitely very very well cast and uh really really wonderful to have a writer director who has a lot of um who has a lot of great ideas in mind while keeping the origin of the story and yes that's no, it <laughs> for sure. no, I'll take it <laughs> yeah um, no yeah you know one of the, my favorite things that I've heard him say about you know this film is that his goal was to not just adapt you know the wardrobe and the look of the character and make it like a glorified, you know, cosplay film. Mm-hmm. But he wants to create three-dimensional characters that the mm-hmm. audience can connect with. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, that was honestly what I would love to hear as a fan of not only the video games, but, you know, horror movies. <laughs> yeah. Because obviously you want to connect with these characters. And, you know, I, I love his thought process behind it. Um, but with that in mind, is there anything that you can think of you know, in particular that fans can expect to see from your portrayal of Ada Wong that they haven't seen before? Um, I'm going to leave that for the big screen. All right. Hey, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with a little bit of anticipation. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to leave all that for the big screen. <laughs> no, yeah, you're, you're good. <laughs> um, so let me ask you this. Um, what what are you hoping is the fans' big takeaway when they see the film in November? 
Um, I hope that they really connect to every character in the way that um, in the way that a non horror or action or any kind of movie with um, crazy special effects or um, you know action sequences in the way that you do, because I think sometimes that can be distracting from the story, but I think the characters in this movie are, <clears throat> like you said, very much well-rounded whole characters. And I hope that they can connect with every single one of them for the reasons that they do what they do. And I hope that they are also thoroughly spooked and terrified. <laughs> <laughs> as they should be, yes. As they, um, as they should be, and I think will be. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and I think they'll be really happy with, uh, with what they see of each character's portrayal. No, for sure. Um, well, you know, people don't have to wait much longer. Um, the film will be here November 24th. So yeah. fingers crossed um, that nothing stops that. I know we, <laughs> with the pandemic, we, we've been getting hit or miss with the release dates, but I'm really hoping this one um, doesn't suffer that fate. But regardless, it will arrive at one point. Um, but hey, Lily, I do want to thank you for your time. And, you know, it's been great speaking with you. We look forward to seeing you in more projects, both behind and in front of the camera. So uh, you're definitely one to watch out for. Thank you. Thank you very much for this really fun interview um, and the chance to talk about creative work uh, while we're all kind of still cooped up in our homes. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited for the film as well. And um, I will be in touch with you for future exciting projects. Yeah, for sure. Um, before I let you go, is there anywhere that um, your fans can look you up on social media? Uh, yeah, I am on Instagram under L I L Y G A O one. Um, I I don't use Twitter very much. Um, I think the last thing I posted was maybe three years ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that that's about it. I, I'm not on Facebook or anything. So hey, that works. Instagram is just basically Facebook with pictures. So you're good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, hey, I really appreciate it. And again,